Time for some photo etch. Hi everybody and welcome back to you Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and part number five of the Tamiya 135th scale Panzer II US Capture Project. In the last episode, I got the remaining uh, plastic bits glued on. The turret here glued the um, whole top onto the bottom. And uh, yeah, so we're looking good. I think one thing I'm going to do before I go too much further, though, is I'm going to get out uh, my um, multi-tool, which is this thing here. And I'm going to try <clears throat> and see if I can burnish along the edge of these fenders to make sure, because some of them are... are hanging a little proud of the fender and they need to be perfectly flush so it looks like a bent over turned down fender or whatever you want to call it so let me see what I've got to do that yeah, I did it off camera because of the noise but it seems to be pretty good I really won't be able to tell until I uh, um, let me just show you until I get some primer on it, but I'm just buzzing it down like that. And then, using my 400 grit sanding stick, going down so as not to pop that loose from the plastic, just making sure it's, uh, making sure it's good so we'll see but anyway that is done so <clears throat> i can move on to putting some photo etch in place so where shall we start the first thing it shows in the instructions is the uh, bar that goes across for the um, spare tracks but I'm going to save that till the end because I want to get the tracks assembled first and see how many links I have left over um, so let's move on to well I really need my photos my reference photos <clears throat> alright the first part I'm going to work on I'm going to work on the front and I'm going to start on this fender and work my work my way around. So according to the photo etch instructions it calls for sub-assembly of the sledgehammer with the appropriate brackets installed and then put on the um, on the front right fender next to the jack well in the photos that I have I don't show either item there um, and the, the photos are not the best can't really see what brackets if any should be there so like right here it's flat it looks like there's a bracket there but which bracket what kind what was it holding because these things were changing around so much as far as what where the stowage was for all these tools and stuff that it's just it's kind of impossible to tell because see even right here it's that you really can't see anything there so I don't know I mean it looks in some of the photos like now see like there's something here but I can't tell what it is and it's not a sledgehammer because there's no big head on it so I don't know is it a, an axe maybe or I just can't really tell what is there so see like right here again no it's not an axe it's the cable so the cables kind of laying across there now there's a bracket right here which I'm assuming 
possibly was for the jack. So let's see. So the jack clamp now. Well, yeah, I guess it could be. So let's look. Let's find the jack bracket first. So that is part number 30. So where is part 30? I think it's on this one here. Oh, do I have 30 right there? So that could be it because it looks like it looks like in this photo here that it's one side's open. So the parts could just be laying on there. Yeah, I'm thinking that part is open. The other part may even be squished down. I don't know, because I can't really tell if it's there or not. It's hard to tell. So what I'm gonna have to do on this, and I, so as not to make this like ultra long, the parts that I'm gonna put on here and the locations is gonna be my best guess as to what goes where. So I'll just have to do it like that. So let's see, let's actually, before I do that clamp, I think I'm gonna do the fender supports here first. So I'm going to do, um, That's part number 20. 20 goes on this side. So let's get my knife out here. And obviously 21 will go on the other side. So I'll demonstrate how I cut these off for the first few, well, probably just this part here. And then the rest of them I'll do off camera when it comes time to cutting stuff off. So basically I'm just taking my knife blade and I'm dragging it along this little connecting point here till it stops on the part and then cutting. That way I get it as close as possible. So there's less stuff I have to sand or file. So let's see. So there's a little bit to have to file here. So to do that, I use these Tamiya Photo Etch bending tool. And I get the part as close as I can, the edge as close as I can to the end of the tool. And then carefully, carefully using the file, you can even use a fine sanding stick. like this, very gently swipe it across there. You don't want to, the reason I like to get it really super close and I do this gently is because I don't want to bend the part. Like that. So then I need to do it on the other end here. Then I need to bend the part into its shape. So there's some um, etched lines. That's where the part needs to bend. So this has to go
hope this doesn't break. I bent it the wrong way. Goes up like this. into a 90 and then this needs to bend up let's see first I'm going to bend this part down <laughs> again I it's going to be hard to show you this stuff you're just going to have to take my word for it I need to bend that down to a 90. Like that. And then I have to use some tweezers for this one. to bend up like this a little bit more like that I tell you photo edge sometimes I like it sometimes I don't like it so there it is but Gonna take some clever, clever super glue work. Okay, there, there we go. So this needs to mount. Goes right across this here. So let's put it on here and see how it fits. pretty good so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some gel super glue right there stick it in place because the gel should give me a few seconds to actually work put that there the applicator make sure I have it lined up boom wow it worked it's a little off but you know what that is fine Okay, so now I need to get some super glue underneath this part here. Get that glued down. <clears throat> so for that, I'm going to use some thin. All right, so I got this part on right here. As you can see, there's kind of a loop. That's where one of the lights go. And for uh, right there, for the hole, I'm using this awesome little Tamiya electric handy drill these things are really cool comes with two collets and it's a slow speed perfect for this kind of stuff so that way I can still use 
plastic cement to glue the light on. So let's cut one off and I'll show you. Get the little thing cleaned up here. And it should after a little bit, well, I gotta clean the burr off of there. And just like ah, ah, just like that. Yeah, I'm stoked. That way it'll be a nice good plastic to plastic bond. I don't have to worry about knocking it off as easily. Alright. So let's see what's next. All right, here's something else I had to do. Using my scriber, I had to uh, make a little slit for this, what's supposed to be a blackout light. So I just used, I just winged it, and it's a little tiny bit crooked, but you know, I'm sure they were kind of, could be, but whatever. Um, I just used my scriber, scribed a little line. That'll give the appearance of <clears throat> the slot there so let's go ahead and glue this in place for this I think I'll use this cement here put a little dot of it right there possibly there it goes Alright, so there's that. And then let's put the light in place. Oh shoot. Good stop. There we go. All right, there's that. So that takes care of the light. So then the other thing I need to do, um, I, that I just see, I need to do that clamp. So let me find, that was number 30, which was right here. Now, when it comes to this part, I'm just gonna assume that um, the other side, cause there's one side comes up, the other side comes up and flips across. I'm just going to assume that it is uh, going off the photo, that it is just kind of laying there, mostly flat with this part here with the hinge on it and the wing nut kind of sticking up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it off camera because it's easier that way. I'm just going to put that right there like that all right now moving around <clears throat> the next thing i need to install are these um brackets for the spare wheel although the spare wheel is not going to be up there um, these are still in place on the photos of the vehicle but they're pretty much just used to hold the cables so i'm going to cut those off start gluing those on Okay, these are really easy to bend. So it's just a matter of using your tweezers and making one, two, three, four 90 degree bends and you are good to go. They look like that. It's kind of a weird looking S shape. Then it's just a matter of gluing them into place. Now, since my head's gonna get in the way, I'm not gonna do them on camera. So you'll just have to take my word for it that I'm handling this all by myself. And it's nice because I can glue it, I can glue it right on top of what I've already done there. So that's pretty groovy. Just like that. Pretty stoked. All right. So from there, I'm going to move on to the other fender. To start with, I need to <clears throat> do the other fender support. Now I showed you how I did it on the other one, so I'm not going to show you on this one. 
um, just save a little bit of time, but it's basically going to be the same thing. Now, one quick note. Whenever I glued mine into place, it stuck before I had it positioned exactly where I wanted. So, <clears throat> this part here, the part on top of the fender, it was standing above the fender. So that was not gonna work. So what I did is I just used, and it wasn't glued, glued down yet, <clears throat> that part. So I just used my tweezers and I wiggled this back and forth till it broke off. And then using my shears, my photo at shears, I trimmed the appropriate amount off to where that would sit flat. And then I just butted up against the, uh, the mount part. No problem. So hopefully I won't do the same thing again. And a real quick tip while I'm thinking about it, any of your uh, tools, whether they're homemade, um, CA applicating tools, or store bought or hobby bought or online bought, whatever, good way to clean those, prolong their life, is use a flame and just cook the excess off. You'll hear it kind of crackle a little bit, so you'll know that it's burning off. All right, just a quick tip. That one's free. Continuing on with the current step, I also need to assemble the, uh, the horn or siren or whatever it is. Uh, because that goes right here. <clears throat> and I also have to, <coughs> excuse me, make a little bracket here um, for the, I think it's called a no, no tech light, I think it's called. That one right there. And it goes on the front edge of this. Then I need to glue this on, but we'll get there. So let me cut some of those parts off. Okay, for this siren or whatever it is, horn, uh, calls for a little piece of plastic. So what I did is I used some plastic tubing that I have. It's about the right size, and then I can glue those pieces together. All right, the light's glued, or the horn's glued on, so I need to glue the light on as well. And I also need to glue on the tab for the no tech, no tech, whatever it is, light, number 54. So... I need the kit part headlight here that I'll cut off and then I will also cut off that bracket which is number 54. Oh, uh, let's see, 54. Wow, that's a big flipping bracket. Wow. I didn't realize it was that large. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, I guess. Well, I'm making a prediction here that probably about half this stuff that I'm gluing on here is going to pop off at some point. So, just forewarned is forewarned, forearmed. So, I need that no-tech light. The only problem is, is it's got a weird-shaped base to it and um, this kit part is pretty heinous so I'm gonna have to look around the parts box and see if I can find something a little more suitable okay next it shows um, gluing these clamps on however in my photos here there there are no clamps in that area the only thing there is this fender support looks like something just laying on there and then the antenna the antenna box so um, yeah I won't be using those clamps but I'm gonna save them because they'll come in handy in the future for other stuff so the next thing I guess I need to do 
Yeah, I can see it shows the uh, shows the shovel, the shovel and the axe go there on on a regular vehicle, but on this one, um, it's just not there. So, I guess I will just be uh, <clears throat> doing the antenna part next. Uh, one more thing I forgot while I was rooting around. I had to find uh, a part that would be a reasonable facsimile of this base for the Notec light or whatever it's called. And I have this right here which is a um, antenna mount for a US Sherman and you know what now it looks exactly like what I want it to look like so I am gonna glue that thing right there cut a little bit of this base off though looks pretty good Got a little bit of a taper to it and a couple of little parts. So I think that'll work nicely. So I'm gonna use my amazing super glue stuff here. Gel type. Put a little dab on there and drop it in place like that. Hope I get it in position before the glue dries, if it's even going to touch the surface there. I don't think the glue actually made contact with the metal. So, no, I didn't. So let's try that again. Okay, that should do it. Bingo! or Bob's your uncle as they say all right so now let's get back on this antenna so being the clever chap that I am I almost cut the antenna part off that would have been a tragedy indeed I would have I would have wept okay so the first thing I need to do there's kind of a ridge along the outside edge of this it really shouldn't be there um, so I'm going to sand that down and then I need to cut that pin off there so it will rest and then I can glue the <clears throat> photo etch parts on here. So let's get cracking with that. Got to sand the end as well. It needs to be nice and flat for the part that goes on there. Nice, and then sand this edge here. It's because of the way that it's molded, there's kind of a, a it flares out a bit, and we don't want that. So I'm not mistaken. I think these were like a, I think it was like a wooden, long skinny wooden box. Could be wrong, but I think that's what it was. Right, the first part I need to cut off is part number 42 which is like a, a hinged mount that goes on the front of the antenna box here and that is right there Now this is where <clears throat> photo etch parts are really nice because I don't know how well you can see it in the video but there's like little screw or bolt hardware on there that would be really tough to pull off in plastic. I mean I guess you could do it in, in the mold <clears throat> but this just gives it some really nice definition. And there it is just like that. So that will rest like that on that fender. 
so there's that. So now I need to cut um, <clears throat> 32 and 44, which are the brackets that the, this antenna will rest on at an angle. So let's cut those off. We've got 32 and 44. Here is 44. <clears throat> Bending this part, it's important to make sure that this bolt detail is facing up on the inside of everything that gets bent because that's part of the bolts bolts to the fender. So let's take the old bender here and we'll bend that up into a 90 or reasonable facsimile thereof. Like that. Carefully turn it around. I'm gonna have to use tweezers for this side. Uh, no. Pretty close. So I'll use my tweezers to bend it the rest of the way. Now what I'm going to do is this right here, I'm actually going to um, And it's angled slightly too. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you should be able to see it's angled down. So that's the part that needs to go that way. So bend this over like that. And this over like that. And just as a quick note, I know a lot of uh, people watch my channel because it's kind of, I, I kind of geared toward more beginner people or you know intermediate people or people who maybe haven't done some of this stuff like photo etch or any of that kind of business and um you'll notice other than this i really don't have any specialized photo etch tools now i know there are some things that you really need photo etch tools for but for the type of stuff i do um, i've never found the need <clears throat> And I'm not saying that you shouldn't get them, but I'm just, I'm saying that, you know, you can do photo etch without specialized tools. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're thinking about trying some photo etch, if you've got some tweezers or anything like that, you should be good <clears throat> to go. All right, so on that one there, <clears throat> I need to glue a number 42. I think I'm going to do that after I get this glued to, to the vehicle. And then there's a plate right there that uh, overlaps this part and the antenna. So some of this stuff I'm going to have to glue. Some of it I might be able to do like this. Well, maybe. Yeah, some of the stuff I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do on <clears throat> on the vehicle. But this bracket here is going on here. That way I can put it in place. The other bracket I can slide it into place and make sure it's touching the fender and the bottom of the antenna box, which I'll demonstrate. All right, in order to help this stick in place while I'm gluing this little tiny piece on, I put it on some uh, tape, sticky side up, a couple pieces to hold it on the ends, and uh, I should be good. So I need to make sure <clears throat> that I get this straight the first time, because if I don't, I'm going to be hating life. And I want to make sure that that side over there is flush for that plate that goes on there. <clears throat> so I should probably turn this a little bit this way. Now, I think... Um, I think I'm going to use my black... 
CA glue because you have more time to move it around. And uh, because man, I don't want that to stick. Right away. Let's put a little dab right there. And then using this high tech tool here. pick aka cocktail stick put that on there like that and then put it in place and of course <laughs> using this stuff I pretty much got ah oh, my head's getting in the way sorry got it dialed the first time that's the way it usually works If I'd have used something that was going to set immediately, uh, it would have stuck and it would have been crooked. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry really good before I try and put that other plate on there. Next, I'm going to get this, uh, the other one bent and ready to go. And glue, oh, I see. have those ready so I've got to do number 32 <clears throat> which is this one here then to go right here I need two of these part 49s Need one for here and then one on this piece that's going to go over there. Okay, I got that one on. So now I can glue this on here. Now the one thing, let's see. It needs to butt up against the vehicle. Almost. It needs to go right about there. All right, so that looks pretty good. So this part right here in the front, I need to bend that down just a little bit so it sits a little flatter on the uh, on the fender. And then for that, um, let's see. Yeah, that looks good like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the black again just so I have a little bit of time to work. So let's put some here and here. Okay, now I'm going to hopefully carefully I want to get this part first and then this one and that looks that looks pretty good yeah that looks good and then just to play it safe where that antenna goes into the hull I can use some extra thin. Now I'm gonna let that dry good. Then I'll put this piece and this piece in place. All right, so as you can see, I've got a piece of tape here. And what that's for is where, so I know where to put the uh, super glue. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use black on the top and slide that into position and then uh, on the bottom I'm going to use liquid and let capillary action take care of that. So there's a little bit of glue there. Alright, so I can peel this off now. And 
Now hopefully I can get this one one try. just like that cool make sure it's flush all right so that looks good so see that looks a lot better than uh, than the plastic uh, molded on blobs that were there before so now all I have to do is put this I can pick it up after I drop it. Put that right there. Just like that all right so we got that so now I need to cut off part number 42 which is a little angle that goes there so let me do that and that went right there so that takes care of the antenna so next we've got Okay, referring back to my um, photos, this part here, number 46, it's some kind of, I don't know what it is, is in place right there. And it looks like it might be in the one photo I have that shows that part <coughs> of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, of the Of the fender um, but the part here this strap looking part that the shovel goes on to I just don't know I can't it does not look like there's anything there other than that little part and the fender the fender brace so I think that's all I'm going to put there. I don't I don't see any evidence of any of the rest of those clamps and stuff. Um it's just it's just too hard to tell. It's too hard to tell in these photos. They are limited. <coughs> and, <coughs> and with the way that things were changed around and everything else on these vehicles I just don't know really what I should put and where so I think what I'll do just to put something there just to add some interest I mean I may be wrong I'm gonna put this 56 46 and 45 I'm gonna glue those in place just so there's something on there so hopefully you know I mean I can't really tell if it's wrong or right. If it's wrong, well, that's just a bummer. And if it's right, well, then get on me for guessing correctly. So I'm going to cut all those parts out and uh, start getting those glued in place. Okay, so I've got 46 in place. Slightly crooked, but that's okay. And then I'm going to put 45 on here. I'm using the gel super glue. And it goes right there, like that. Okay, and then this piece here will go right there. All right, same thing, some gel here.
Can't even tell if there's any. There it goes. Oh. And right there. Oh, splendid. Okay. So that takes care of this part of the fender. On the uh, on the back deck here, or on yeah, on the back deck in this back fender, um, looks like most everything is on the back deck. So we've got some of these lifting hooks for here, and I've already glued this on and this on. And then there's some hinges and stuff for the box that's not there anymore. So this part's going to be really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and break, uh, cut these off. I'll fold one and show you what it looks like. And then I'll do the rest off camera. And that will take care of this part right here. So let me, let's see here. Hooks. Okay, here we go. They are part number 40. And there is a bunch of them. So I'm going to cut three of them off. There's one. I'm just going to cut one off so I can show you what, to, what I'm doing here. Uh, looks pretty good. All right. So the way this works is using my tweezers since these parts are so small. The little part that bolts on, I'm going to fold that up just a little bit on both sides. like that then oh you know what yeah then using my tweezers I'll bend if I can keep a grip there we go like that and then use my tweezers whoops Maybe I need to little bend a little bit more. There we go. And then use my tweezers and really squeeze it together like that. So then all I have to do is just flatten that out and make sure it's at a 90 degree angle to the hook, which you probably can't see on the camera because these parts are so bleeding small. So there and there. I've got a piece of white paper over here that makes it easier to see. So I'm going to be off camera just for a second. That's perfect. All right, and then it can be glued in place. So this one is going to go right, right there. Okay, just like that. So I'm gonna break out the old gel super glue. Like thusly. And then very carefully. Put that a little off center. Should it be off center? No. <laughs> See, that's part of the problem with doing this on camera. Because I can't get my noggin in the way, but it's all right. So, I'm going to do those other ones, then come back. All right, next I need to assemble this light here. And I had to get another piece of scrap plastic so I can make this spacer. There's a chain, and then there's a heat shield for the... Uh, muffler and then this part goes on but I'm not going to put this on yet because I've already done all this so it should be ready to go so I need to cut off parts where to go 53 
five. There's a chain I need to cut off, which is 22 and 14, which is the uh, heat shield. So let us begin. <clears throat> All right, to get this curve right here, I used an eyedropper to bend it. Attach the two little mounting points there, and then now I'm going to attempt to get it to stick to these two spots here, like thusly. Sweet. Man, that turned out good. Um, so next I'll cut out those other small parts for the little um, light and the chain. There it is. The three components of this little teeny tiny light. <coughs> so that's ready to be glued on. <coughs> so now all I have to do is cut off the chain. Get it bent to the shape it's supposed to be. And I can uh, put that in place as well. I've got the chain in place, but it's not at the proper sag because I want both ends to dry really good before I mess with it. So for now, I'm going to install this light, hopefully. Right there okay so that pretty much covers this whole segment here so now I can move on to this and I can start putting the latches on the boxes the latches and the hinges so let me get all those parts cut off and we'll uh, see what we got Okay, I had to do that off camera because of the contortions I was having to do. But I got all those glued on the lid parts, let that set up, and then I'm going to smash the rest of it down and then apply the, uh, oh, what do you call that stuff? The CA glue to it. Okay, all in place. So now all I have to do is cut out the latches and uh, hasps and everything. All right, <clears throat> so real quick, like what I'm doing here, I've got the hinges on, I've got the stationary part of the, the uh, latches, and now I'm putting the hasp part in place. And boy, is it rough. These are some tiny parts. And I gotta hook that little loopy part over a little protrusion, and it's just crazy. But thank goodness I have some an optifizer kind of thing which is helping immensely so I'm gonna loop them all on there and then I'll glue them but uh, yeah this is uh, this is something all right so <clears throat> all the latches are done so now I can move on to these steps here and there's a lot of stuff going on so the first thing I need to do is 35 and 36 are pieces that go along that right there so I'm gonna cut those off
All right, those two are on. <clears throat> now I can start putting all this other junk on here. <clears throat> all right, let's see. Next, I think I will... Um, I will do this box here, or these stacked boxes. And what those need are some brackets and uh, hinges and all that kind of stuff. So let's start with the back, which uh, I need four parts, number 11. And those are here. right there all right I got all those <clears throat> glued in place so now I'm gonna do the uh, top part of the hasp I'm gonna do it just like I did on that uh, molded in toolbox basically gonna take this using some gel super glue and getting some on there for crying out loud and then just carefully put it in place like that oh, knock it off Wow, this is just not my day with this stuff. Wow. I think once I get this done, it's going to be time for a break because this stuff's starting to frustrate me. So I got that one, got to do the other two. All right, so <clears throat> I've got these parts of the hasps on. Now, here is a quick uh, little thought on my part. So what I do, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I'm starting to get frustrated with these little parts. And if I get frustrated, then I start doing, you know, ham-fisted things. So what I do when I get to a case like that, I stop. Box up the kit, set it aside, and work on another kit for a few days um, or a week, and then come back. That's why I always like to have two kits on the go at a time, or why I used to, and why I used to do it a lot, and now starting again. So I think I'm going to um, end this video here, part five, with uh, partial completion of all of the photo etch. So next time in part six, when I come back, I will continue with the photo etch and maybe get to the point of uh, starting to do some of the scratch building on the extra um, toolbox, tool bin, whatever it is, storage bin that goes on this part of the fender and then do a scratch built um, jerry can rack for the back of this so as always if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of this particular build or see some of my others please hit the subscribe button if you have any questions, comments, hints, tips, concerns, anything like that, put them in the comments section down below. And until next time, on part six of the Tamiya 135th scale Panzer II U.S. Capture Project, I will see you all later.